So SCAD is spontaneous coronary artery dissection and it is one of the more common causes of heart attack in young men and women. And what happens is that there's either a tear in the wall of the artery or swelling of the wall of the artery. But regardless, what happens is that the blood flow down an artery is restricted and that in most cases causes a myocardial infarction or heart attack, but in rare cases can just cause unstable angina type symptoms. Folks that are at highest risk of having SCAD are women. Uh, women are much more likely than men, um, especially women under the age of 55. And in particular, women who have just had a baby, so within the first year after having a baby, women on hormone replacement therapy, or women um, and men who have something called fibromuscular dysplasia, which is a disease or condition that affects the blood vessels going to the kidneys and the head and neck. And for some reason, it seems like SCAD is, um, SCAD patients are very likely to have underlying fibromuscular dysplasia. So the symptoms of SCAD are very similar to the traditional symptoms of heart attack. Um, so chest tightness, pain in the arm, neck, back, or jaw. Those are the most common symptoms and occasionally people will have the less common symptoms such as just palpitations, shortness of breath, or excessive fatigue. Now when patients come in with those symptoms, today because there's been improved awareness, we're pretty quick to evaluate for a possible heart attack and that will include things such as an EKG, um, a blood test which would be troponin to look for an elevation of the troponin, and an echocardiogram or an ultrasound of the heart can be done to look and see if there's any part of the heart that isn't contracting well, which is also suggestive of an underlying vessel problem. When we suspect or we have evidence of a heart attack, we'll go on to do testing, which the gold standard currently is a cardiac catheterization. Um, other ways you can sometimes see it include CT scanning of the heart, but most commonly we'll do a cath, and that's really the best way to make the definitive diagnosis. During a cath, sometimes we will do either an OCT, which is optical coherence tomography, which is putting a wire down the vessel and looking at the vessel from the inside out, or intravascular ultrasound, which is where we put an imaging catheter inside the heart and also look at that blood vessel from the inside out. Now the patients that are at highest risk with SCAD are two categories. The first is women that are peripartum. For some reason we know that the blood vessels of peripartum women are very soft and they're very fragile. And when SCAD occurs, it can cause complete disruption of blood flow to the heart muscle. And peripartum SCAD is associated with a much higher risk of cardiac arrest and complications such as cardiogenic shock, which require advanced treatment such as mechanical support or coronary artery bypass grafting. The other group that's at high risk of complications is men and women with connective tissue disorders such as Ehlers-Danlos or Marfan's. For some reason, SCAD in those patients is much more complicated as well.